everyone, and welcome to another episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso. And my name is AJ Pellegrino. And we empower men and women to create orgasmic relationships by living in their divine feminine and masculine essences. And we wanted to take this show to introduce ourselves to you. And one of the questions that we get a lot is, how did you meet? So AJ, how did we meet? Uh, we met at a spiritual retreat in the Catskill Mountains in New York uh, this past 4th of July, and we were working with different types of plant medicines. Beautiful. Um, I want to share a little bit about that particular aspect with you because a year ago, if you would have told me that I was going to go to a retreat where there was plant medicine, I would have said, no way, that's not my jam, that's not what I do. But at that time in my life, um, I was living in an unhealthy household situation and I had put my business on hold because I wanted to get more clear with myself about what I wanted and what was next for me in my evolution, in the evolution of the business that I have, in the evolution of the services that I offer. And I just was looking for guidance. And really what I wanted was to drop into my true essence. And because I listened to my body and I listened to divine intelligence, I was very clearly led to attend this retreat where I met AJ. And the funny thing is, you know, because whenever you're not looking for something, that's when it shows up. <laughs> when I got to the retreat and I saw AJ sitting at the table, my whole body just lit up. But then I was like, no, no. Don't look at him. I'm here for myself. I'm here for my own retreat. I'm here for my own evolution. I'm not looking for a relationship right now. And so I kind of ignored him the first couple of nights. <laughs> and during the retreat and diving into myself more and diving into my own feminine radiance more, and surrendering to that feminine essence, then, you know, I drew in this beautiful, masculine, delicious man. <laughs> and here we are. So uh, what led you to the retreat? So um, I'll just give you guys the quick backstory. I don't want to go too much into it because this could be a whole podcast in okay. itself. Um, but basically, um, about Three to four years ago, I was going to acupuncture school, uh, getting my master's in oriental medicine. And one thing led to another. There was a lot of things going on in my life. Um, and I wasn't really equipped to balance the things that was going on in my personal life, as well as the schooling. And I was really just like kind of the wheels were falling off the carriage. And I just didn't have the emotional tools. I wasn't equipped to deal with it. So I ended up dropping out of acupuncture school. Um, and this was about uh, three years after, or, or two years after I graduated from uh, Rowan University. I, I'm actually from New Jersey. Um, so I was going to acupuncture school. I ended up dropping out and I was just really crushed because this was something that I thought I was gonna do for the rest of my life. Um, leading up to that point, I spent some time in Hawaii. I was living off the grid. Uh, for a couple months with my friend. And that was kind of the start of soul searching in terms of like what my actual uh, objective is here on this planet. And a lot of my anxiety and stuff like that came from not being aware of what I really wanted to do. So one thing led to another. Um, I decided I wanted to go into some type of holistic healing and acupuncture sounded like a great thing to do because there's, you know, there's virtually no side effects from that. And, you know, the, the benefits are endless. I still do believe in acupuncture. I will always advocate that to anybody who's interested in, in getting some healing done. Um, but I was about a year into school. I was absolutely crushed. I dropped out and I, I just didn't know what to do or what direction to go in in my life. Um, long story short, I got connected um, with a shaman that works in New Jersey and uh, California. She's bi-coastal along with her husband. And 
I just intuitively knew I, I had to, to go there. There was a ceremony about 15 minutes away from my house. Um, I really had no idea what I was even walking into, but I just knew deep down in my heart that I needed to be there. And, you know, that first experience working with, with plant medicine in, um, in a safe container with a shaman who's really a trained professional to, to facilitate these things. You know, it's one thing to go off into the woods or, you know, on the beach with your friends and doing <laughs> psychedelics. Um, this isn't really like that. It's not about having fun. I mean, it, it can be fun. We did have fun. We had lots of fun, <laughs> but it's not about getting high or escaping. It's really about going into yourself and um, just allowing whatever needs to come up to release it so that you can, you know, be a better, more highly functioning human being. So I did, you know, that first ceremony. And then for about a year, year and a half, um, I was kind of on that path, not kind of, I was on that path. Um, in the beginning, because I needed it, I, I needed to do these types of ceremonies, pretty relatively often, it was, you know, maybe once every other month, or every other couple months, you know, it was probably like I did about 10 ceremonies in that first year. And for me, that first year of, of doing this type of work was really just a lot of unpacking, a lot of ancestral stuff. Um, you know, we all, we lock these things into our body. Um, and it was just a lot of just unpacking things that were not mine, just, mm -hmm. and it just kept coming and coming and coming. And after that first year or so, I kind of felt like I was at a new place in my life where I was kind of on the diving board. And then about another year, I was still doing ceremony work, but you know, less often. Um, and it was really about building myself back up. You know, the first half was Letting unpacking. Yeah. And then this, and then that second year was about just building myself back up. Mm. And, um, you know, right up until I met Patty, I was at a, I was at a good place in my life. Um, I, I wasn't comfortable. I, I was still living at home with my, with my family and I was getting ready to embark on a journey. I'm, and I'm not talking about ceremony work. I'm talking about how I'm going to apply everything that I've done and learned and embodied in the work that I did. And how am I going to start actually delivering this to the world? Mm -hmm. um, I was just kind of in my own cocoon, really, uh, for a long time. And it was, it was very isolating. There was times where I thought I was going crazy. But I kind of went through this awakening process by myself. And that was a big part of getting led to this group that offers the plant medicine was, I learned that I really wasn't alone. And, and this awakening process that's going on, on this planet right now, it's going on more than ever. Um, but for me, in about 2017, that's when my awakening kind of happened. And then the plant medicine um, kind of helped me unfold that within myself. Mm. So um, leading up to, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to add from my own experience, um, I've been doing personal work for 15 years. For those of you that have been working with me and listening and, and following me, I, I've been involved in personal development for a long time. And at the time of choosing this ceremony, I knew that I had reached like a stopping point and that I needed to, to take it to another level. And there were some deep things that I also needed to work through and all of the other things that I have been studying over the last 15 years that I just kind of hit a level. And that's what led me to choose that particular ceremony uh, last year was because I just knew that there was more, but I couldn't access it where I was. And so the ceremony for me provided that really deep, that deepening experience within myself to unlock and unleash all of the other things that I hadn't uh, been able to, to deal with. I mean, there's been a lot of things that have come up in the last year that I had sort of brushed to the side and, you know, not dealt with quite just yet. And the plant medicine opened up 
the space for me to face all of those things and, and open up to a new possibility, which is really what we're here to talk to you all about today. Was there more that you wanted to share about your story? Because we do want to share with you our actual ceremony together. Um, but I just want to make sure that there isn't anything else that you want to say. Oh, and yeah. So, I mean, just to summarize it, it was just a lot of soul searching leading up to meeting Patty. And there was other, you know, women in my life that I, I could have been with and I could have, you know, had fun with whatever you want to call it. Um, but I just truly felt in myself that like, I was just really in my own process and I didn't had the space to let anybody else in because mm -hmm. I just felt like that would have deterred me of this path that I was on. I didn't know where I was going, mm -hmm. but I, I was just listening to the, to my inner guidance system. Yeah. And when I met Patty, I mean, that's just, it's kind of, mm -hmm. it was history from there. <laughs> <laughs> and that is actually also true for me. I had chosen on purpose, very consciously to be single. And I was single and not even dating, for about six years, I really wanted to focus on myself and, and making myself a better person and being the woman that I really, really came here to be before I let anyone else into my life. Because, I mean, look, we all know relationships bring stuff up right? That's, that's what they're here for, I think, in my opinion, when you get together with someone and you start creating a relationship, it's going to bring up a lot of a lot of your stuff. And so I wanted to be prepared and equipped so that when I met someone, I felt ready in my own power, in my own essence, in my own being, right, to receive someone else into my life so that we could then create together. And I know for myself, one of the things that I was looking for in a relationship was a partner, a partner that I could create something with, a partner that I could uh, live this life in continuous growth. For me, it was super important to have a partner that was willing to do his own inner work. And that's part of, I think, what attracted us to each other. So mm -hmm. We were both in that place of no more playing around. We're ready for the real deal. Um, and we committed to ourselves. And in that commitment to ourselves, and please add anything if, if you want to add to it, in that commitment to ourselves, uh, the universe aligned itself and aligned our true heart's desires so that we could meet and continue this journey together. Does that, is there anything you want to add about that? It allowed us to meet again because we've known each other for lifetimes and I don't know, you know, <laughs> who's listening to this or what your views are, but that's something I know to be true. And, and we experienced it firsthand, which we'll yeah. get into. Yeah. And I think that, you know, when you're out in the world and you meet someone and your body has that response and, and there's an energy that's there, you can safely assume that you've shared many lifetimes with them. <laughs> So I knew from the moment I saw him, but at the same time, I was so committed to my own work in that moment that in a sense, I sort of pushed him away at first and I kind of resisted a little bit. But thank you, Grandmother Ayahuasca, who always shows you exactly what you need to see. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about that first night together where we surrendered to what Grandmother was showing us. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. um, so... Like I said, this was my first ceremony. And so I was a little bit nervous and trepidatious, but my shaman took really good care of me and, and set me up in a really nice comfy spot in a little bed all by myself. <laughs> and I had, uh, you know, people there that were taking care of me and making sure that, that I was okay. And one of the things that popped for me that allowed me to open was right in the beginning of the journey. The thing that I, that I heard that I was aware of that really grounded into my body was, I'm tired of doing this alone. It's so much more fun when you include other people in your life. Like I felt that in that moment. And in that moment, I was able to open up more to the group and open up more to receiving his energy. And that led us to an extraordinary healing experience. Um, I, 
I, I'll start us off with, with how it all evolved. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had to go to the restroom and I, you know, made my way to the bathroom and then I came out of the bathroom and there was one of our now girlfriends, friends, she came out and I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad you're here. Can you help me back to my bed? <laughs> she was like, yes, of course. So she helped me back to the bed because my legs weren't really working that well. And and I was sitting with her and I asked her to sit with me and to stay with me because I was a little bit afraid. It was my first experience. I didn't know what to expect. So there was still a little bit of that. And we talked for a little bit and then she just kind of went, huh, I think you need some AJ. And my whole body lit up and I was like, okay. So then she called him over. <laughs> she was like, AJ, come here, come sit with us. And so then he came and sat with me on the bed and I totally just like melted onto him and and we were just I was just like melted onto him and I was like how are you and and he was like how are you and then I couldn't sit up anymore so I was just like can we just lay down for a second and if you want to share what you were going through at that point well actually if you remember before that happened before she even before you knew who AJ was it was the first night <sighs> It yes. Was the first night. So the first night it, there was no medicine. Um, it was just dinner yes. with the community, kind of everybody stating their intentions. Um, but it was the second night is when we did, we did a particular heart medicine, um, which focuses on the heart chakra, which really kind of just blasted open. Yeah. Uh, like Patty was saying, <laughs> she was kind of off in her little corner in my, in my bed all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and the shaman we work with, like, you know, strategically put her there because she knew that she was new and she just needed to feel her sense of safety. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, she was kind of in her corner doing her little thing. And my thing like this. Kind of like an like a baby seeing for the first time, you know, like just absolute in awe or what is this? Yes. Or, this is so exciting. I'm afraid it was just all the things. And um, meanwhile, you know, the, the ceremony was going on. There was about 15 of us on the floor. Um, it was just a huge, what they call a cuddle puddle where everybody was just laying there and it was just all of us just basking in love. And we yeah. could literally feel each other in, in the room pulling on each other's heartstrings. And we were literally like one unit. And I remember I was laying there kind of helping another woman out um, who was puking pretty violently into a bucket. And there was like a bunch of us around her and I was like holding her hair. And then Patty came over and then I saw her, it might've been the first time I actually like noticed you. Uh -huh. And then I was just like, you are so beautiful. And then you kind of looked at me and I could feel that you like, didn't really believe me. Mm. Like, yeah, I, could, I was hesitant. I was like, okay. I could feel the lack of trust or just the mm. uncertainty, which is normal. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've had to work through a lot of my beliefs around men which maybe we'll get to in this episode maybe not but continue so yeah. I, I said to her I said you're so beautiful and then she kind of looked at me and like was like because look it's not like no one has said that to me before or no other man has said that to me before right I was like okay yeah <laughs> and then she didn't say anything but I kind of heard like you know in like my in my third eye eh. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and then she said, and I said to her, no, like you're beautiful. And then when I said that, I could just feel. You said your soul. Oh yes. I said, your soul is so beautiful. That's what I said. Yeah. I said, you're a beautiful yeah. soul. You're so beautiful. Yeah. And then I think from that moment, that was kind of when. That melted me. Yeah. I mean, hello, that, hello. <laughs> yeah. But in that moment, like telling me that I'm beautiful is that something that people say a lot and all the time. And I know that I'm beautiful, right? It's just, you know, but when you said your soul is beautiful in that moment, I felt seen on a deeper level, because not just of my physical appearance, but that he could see the essence of my being. And that's what pierced through the barriers and pierced through the, um walls and the lack of trust he just pierced 
with his masculine presence pierced through all of that to reach me on a really deep level. And that was the moment, you know? So when my friend came to the bed and was like, I think you need some AJ. <laughs> and right. So AJ, uh, in this community, he, um, he really, and in every day, right. Really shows up in his masculine protector presence and all of the women, um, you know, receive from that masculine presence. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. then I, in that moment, let myself receive from that masculine presence, which then in turn allowed my feminine radiance to truly open and melt, right? And surrender and soften into the beauty of feminine radiance. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, she invited you to come over and sit with us. And then we were sitting and then I was like, I can't sit up anymore. <laughs> and we laid together in a very um, innocent, erotic way that was, I want to stress the word innocence because there was a lot of energy around us and it was palpable in the room. There's a lot of energy around us, but it was very just, I mean, was there another word to describe it? Just innocent and beautiful and not tainted. And for me, it yeah. was just pure intimacy. Yeah. It was yeah. just pure intimacy. Like I've never experienced it like that before yeah. ever. Me neither. And like you used the word melting. I mean, that was pretty much the whole week mm -hmm. was melting. Yeah. That was yeah. pretty much what it was. And it was really just that deep recognition in each other like like we said like we've known each other for lifetimes it was like getting to know patty again <laughs> in these vessels that we're currently wearing yeah but like oh like oh. i've been here before many times before yeah i have so much love for this for this being and i know she has it for me too and it was like kind of our our energy work we're, we're basically melting into each other mm -hmm. and I really like, you know, this was beyond sexual. This was beyond, beyond any of that. It was pure, unconditional love, pure intimacy. Um, and I kind of like many times lost sense of myself because mm -hmm. I, we were just so intertwined with each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that first night, it was just, there wasn't a whole lot of talking. It was a lot of, it was a lot of telepathic talking. A lot of telepathic talking. I know that we both, had lots of downloads of the lifetimes that we've had together, lifetimes where he was a warrior and he was protecting me and lifetimes where I think even our, our little side of the room would kind of morph into like our castle, right? So lifetimes where he was the king and I was the queen and, and he would even like in, in the few words that we exchanged, you know, like he would say, you're my queen. And I'd be like, yeah, but you're my king. And then we would just kind of melt back into the healing of the moment. So let's, let's, can we talk about the healing of it? Um, and as I just kind of tap into that energy again, for me, feeling safe in his masculine presence allowed me to drop deeper into myself. And in that, I realized, right, that I had a little bit more work to do on my inner sense of safety, <laughs> which I have been working on. Um, but it allowed me to open to the deeper healing abilities that my body and I possess, right? I've been a healer this lifetime, many other lifetimes in my business. I've been working with women, healing the feminine, healing what needs to be healed, right? So that we can, we can step into more. But in that moment, in, in being with you and receiving your energy and then gifting my feminine energy to your body. So I'm, I'm happy for you to talk about that. Um, I just reconnected to what I'm meant to be doing here as a healer, as a healer in a feminine body, as a healer, as a woman, and what that energy gifts to the world. 
And I remember laying there and I remember all of the, the other people that were in the cuddle puddle. And, and at that point, like the women had all come together and they were joking and laughing and I could hear their laughter and receiving the masculine energy and the masculine presence and then receiving the joy and the laughter of the feminine. And one of the kind of downloads that I got in that moment was that it is feminine laughter that can heal this planet that can heal the world. So here I was, finally, one of the things that I had asked for before going into the ceremony was, what would it be like to live a life completely undefended? No walls, no defending myself, no defending anyone else, no fighting anything, no, no fighting success, no fighting failure, like just no defenses, just really being in that open state, right? That state of oneness that, that he mentioned. And it just cracked me open in a way that I had been striving for my whole life. And I don't think that would have been possible if I hadn't been feeling the protection from the masculine, which I had been missing in my life, like my whole life. AJ is probably the first man in my life where I feel safe and protected and in that safety and in that protection, which is really the divine masculine essence, right? You guys are here to provide, protect, and procreate, right? So in that divine masculine essence, I could drop into my divine feminine essence of nurturing and caring and healing. And I'm curious what that created for you and for your body in that moment, because it was very vulnerable, our experience with each other. So if you want, if you could share about that, that would make me happy. <laughs> for me, it, you know, it was probably the first time in my life where I felt like I didn't need to, to do anything. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't need to be anything. Mm -hmm. All I needed to do was just be myself. And that was enough. Yeah. I mean, that's really, that's really the best way I can summarize it because a lot of what we experienced really did trans, it, it went beyond language. Yeah. So we're trying to articulate this to you in a way where it doesn't sound too woo-woo and <laughs> who, who are these psycho chickens talking about past lives and whatever the case may be. Um, but it, you know, on, aside from all that, it was just being seen and, and being felt for, for what I was. And that was enough. And feeling that and knowing that in myself cracked me open too. And it allowed me to like, there was, crevices of my body where I could just feel her love coming in or and if it was like my love coming out but it was just like parts of myself that were opening that I didn't even know really existed and it was just holding her and her holding me and we were what I think was going on is, is we were um kind of co-regulating each other yeah I was putting her into homeostasis she was putting my body into homeostasis and we were literally balancing each other's bodies out yeah and yeah. I, I could feel it. Like. And, and radiating that homeostasis, that balance into the rest of the ceremony. I mean, everybody would come and just like peek into where we were. And, and they, they like, I remember they wanted to like feel the energy and be in the energy and be doing their own thing. But I think that 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 energy radiating, not just, you know, to the ceremony, but if we really want to go woo woo, which I think that we should, you know, radiating into the world mm -hmm. the possibility of creating relationships that actually expand you right that's what orgasmic relationships are is when you are with someone and their energy contributes to your body and to your life in a way that makes you greater and your energy contributes to them and their body in a way that makes them greater that's what our, our mission is here, right? I embodying our own essence. And then what can we create together that will create more for everyone around us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just, it just came to me of like the idea of, you know, take this, what we're talking about and apply this to your everyday life. Mm. Think of the people in your life that when you're, when you're with them, you feel like you can be yourself. You feel like you don't need to be anything else. Yeah. 
you know, that's, those are the type of people that you want to be around yeah. where you feel safe and you feel like you can just be yourself. Yeah. If you're around people and you feel very constricted and you're worrying about what, what, like, what do I have to say? What, what, what should I not say? That's probably, you know, your higher guidance telling you that this person isn't in alignment with, with what you really want. And that could be with somebody you meet at a supermarket, or it could be somebody that you've known your whole life Yeah, is to, you know, really just have the courage to listen to yourself because, you know, we like to refer to, to the same thing in different ways. She likes to, she likes to say my body. I like to say <laughs> my higher self. Um, I think we can both agree that what we feel in our body is information that is trying to communicate to us, yeah. right? Divine intelligence, you know, however, yeah. we are all so caught up right now on labels and words and, and, and in those labels and in those words, we create fight and we create opposition and we create, you know, just insanity. Yeah. But if we could all just drop into the energy of what we're saying, and I mean, we, in, in the sense of, everyone in the world, not just him and I right here right now. But if we could just drop into what we're saying into the energy of it, a lot of us are speaking the same energetic language. We just have different words for what we're talking about. Um, so I love that we give each other the space to have our own, right? And that's the key in orgasmic relationships, to have your own sense of self first. When you are grounded in yourself, in your whether it's feminine essence or masculine essence, and we all have both. So whether it's a mixture of both of those, grounding into yourself first, getting clear with yourself first, and then um, inviting and communicating with someone else. Because when they're grounded in their own self and we're secure in our own selves, then we can have that conversation and it can all exist, right? In the same space without judgment without making the other person wrong and I'm right and this is the way to do it. Like that's all the insanity of the current state of most relationships on this planet right now, right? And I think that um, for me in that ceremony, reconnecting to what I'm meant to be doing here and allowing the support and the presence of a partner that will contribute to that. That for me was the greatest, the greatest gift. Mm -hmm. um, any words on that for you? And just to kind of, I guess, go off what you were just saying, you know, you can't fill up somebody else's cup if, you're, mm -mm. if your cup is oh. half full or a quarter full, mm -mm. you know? <laughs> I just gotta laugh at that. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't. And this just shows, you know, I was on my own path, my own healing, my own journey. She was on her own path and her own healing and her own journey. And when we met together, it was a manifestation. She was the outer manifestation of the work that I did on myself and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. Right. Like leading up to meeting Patty, right. I've done many ceremonies. I've met many women in those ceremonies, but I wasn't, I wasn't in the place to to be there, yeah. to, to be there yeah. for somebody else. Cause I was literally just unpacking my own shit, yeah. you know? And meeting Patty was just like the biggest breath of fresh air, the biggest, most hydrating, electrifying glass of water I ever drank. <laughs> That's really what it was like. And, That's um, beautiful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> and like the thing, like the way I see it, why we have such a hard time of connecting to other people is because a lot of the time we're just in our heads, right? Mm -hmm. We're in our analytical minds and then there's our analytical minds, which is necessary, right? You need your analytical mind to get things done, to meet deadlines, to set goals for yourself, uh, to plan out your day, but whatever. Um, but then there's another part of you, which is a higher intelligence, which is the feeling part of your, of yourself, which is the intuitive self. And, I just feel like, you know, so many people walk around this world um, over intellectualizing mm -hmm. every little thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, one of my gurus that I never met, Ram Dass, he's somebody that has influenced me on my path. And he says, you know, when you walk into, into the woods and you see a tree, 
uh, you just appreciate the tree for, for what it is. You know, so, some trees might be a little crooked or whatever. Some of the leaves might be falling off, but the essence of that tree is perfect. And when you're walking around in life um, and you meet somebody that for whatever reason, they might be different from you. It might be threatening to you to, um, to even approach that person, whatever it is. If we can just get out of our heads and just really like feel the essence of that person and, and what they have to offer. Um, you know, I, I, I truly believe everybody is, is so beautiful, right? Inside, we're, we're, all, we're all beautiful. We all have our own special sauce that we, that we bring to this life. Um, and if you're constantly over intellectualizing, um, a lot of the times we kind of play out relationships with people of, I'll be who you need me to be if you right. be who I you want me yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah. And that's like, I realized there was a lot of relationships I had in my life outside of um, intimate relationships, which is friendships was, um, you know, there was a lot of different, I guess you could say, uh, I was going to use the word trauma bonding, but that might be a little uh, dramatic, but, um, th you know, there was a lot of people in my life leading up to meeting Patty where, um, can I, yes, can I, yeah. is that okay? Yep. Yeah we communicate psychically a lot. What I'm hearing you say, um, and I saw, and I realized this in my own relationships, most of my relationships as well, you come into this world and you're this bright, I mean, look at any babies, bright, beautiful beings who just are like curious and joyful and playful. And then, you know, life throws things at you and that that energy gets dimmed down a little bit. And so what happens is we start functioning from that more contracted state of energy. And in that contracted state of energy, we start attracting into our lives energies that will continue that contraction. Is that about what you were trying to get to? Yeah. Um, that start continuing that contraction because it's where we are vibrating at in that moment. And I know that a lot of you have probably heard this in some way or another. Um, so just really allowing that information to trickle into your body and your being in a different way as you hear it now, if this is something you've heard before. So a lot of the relationships that you were attracting and a lot of the relationships that I were attracting were just kind of at that really more contractive state. And I think that when we met, it blew open that contraction and it's allowed for us to start building a new way of creating relationships a, a way of creating relationships again that empowers each other that helps each other to grow and to expand mm -hmm. do you I, want to say more <laughs> no, i agree with that <laughs> yeah um yeah you can't you can't possibly meet somebody, right? You, you can only love somebody to the extent in which you love yourself. Right. Yeah. And yeah. like leading up to meeting Patty, a lot of parts of myself, you know, I don't believe anybody's broken. I believe we're already whole, but like she was saying, we kind of just acquire um, habits and ways of relating to ourselves in the world that were kind of imprinted on us from a very young age, really up to age seven, where, where our minds are literally sponges. And then even into the adolescence going into the adult. Um, so it's just really important, you know, just to, to learn how to love yourself first, because you can't, you can only meet someone in which the, ev the evolution that you've had within yourself. Exactly. And Patty exactly. was really like the universe saying to me, all right, well, you graduated. Here's a, you know, that this is a graduation of some sort of here's your outer manifestation of everything you've been working for. Yeah. Did you um, have a deep desire? Like, so what kind of, even though, sorry, so many things want to come out of my mouth at once. So even though you weren't actively looking um, for a relationship, did you have somewhere in you a deep desire for a particular kind of relationship? Yeah. And Yes. And that type of relationship is, is a conscious relationship. Um, a lot of people in my, uh, in my immediate life, you know, weren't really on that path of awakening. And I'm, I'm not trying to sound better. 
everybody is exactly where they're meant to be at this exact time. And I just happened to have my lid blown open in 2017 for my own awakening process. Mm -hmm. And it felt like anybody I ever talked to or met, like they weren't meeting me at the level in which I already met myself. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of very superficial. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. yeah. So what kind of, oh, you said a conscious relationship. Can you say more about that? Like, what does that mean to you? A conscious relationship? A conscious relationship. So a conscious relationship to me is about empowering each other mm -hmm. to step into each of our own life's purpose and adding to that, not dragging people down. Right. Yeah. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So in a sense, we were, we had a deep desire for something both of us individually. I just want to point this out because that's the thing. Like we had a deep desire within ourselves individually to create. For me, it's orgasmic relationships. For him, it's conscious relationship, right? But we're all speaking the same. As I said before, we had that deep desire within ourselves and we were clear. I was clear on what I was looking for. You know, there was no uncertainty. I was like, I knew exactly what I was looking for. And I was willing to do the work on myself so that I could receive it. And I was willing to wait as long as it took for it to show up. Um, I spent many years building my business and focusing on, on that. So having a relationship wasn't even, you know, in the cards, right? Because I was focused on this one thing. And he spent years focusing on his own uh, awakening and his own development and his own personal development. And again, like the universe, just like, I, I like to joke that grandmother ayahuasca just plopped him on my bed and was like, this is what's next for you <laughs> at the very time when I wasn't actually looking for it. I was really just searching for myself um, on what was next for me. I did not expect it to be uh, a, a relationship. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that we want to say about our relationship or how we met or anything like that before we kind of wrap it up. I feel like, I mean, I've said everything I have to say. So I'll stop talking. Oh, girls, we just talk, 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just, yeah. I mean, we pretty much covered a lot of it. Again, a lot of what we experienced really transcended language and totally. it's, it's hard to even put it into words, but it was just, this experience it opened both of us up and really like it was, I really felt like it was both, you know, leading us back to ourselves. Yeah. You were able to appreciate yourself and I was able to appreciate myself like truly for the, like the first time of like, wow, like I really have put in a lot of work and this woman in front of me is like all over it and she loves it. And I love her. And I guess like just to touch up on like, conscious relationship you know obviously the goal of every of every relationship is to add to each other so that you know you can be a strong couple together you know you don't want to be a burden to each other's life but for me like the reason why I wasn't getting into a lot of relationships because I was looking for a, a woman who prioritized you know her own spiritual development and I was just spiritually developing myself where if I met somebody you know if they were pretty or whatever I just wasn't even going to go there because I, I was just, I truly felt in my heart that I needed to just stick to this path that I was on. And then as I work on myself, there's some, something's going to give. And leading up to this retreat, I had no idea. I, I really didn't even expect it. Like I, I was kind of open to it. Like, Hey, maybe I'll meet somebody at this. I kind of retreat. thought that too. Also, maybe there'll be someone there. No, no, no. I was like, hey, you know, maybe I'll meet somebody at this retreat, but, you know, probably not because the last like 15 ceremonies I went to was just me, you know, diving into myself. But that's really what the whole ceremony was about, was about diving into each other. And, you know, not to brag, but I do feel like a lot of people there were like kind of jealous because what was unfolding before them was you couldn't not see it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like not feel it. It's kind of like the song. We found love in a hopeless place, <laughs> except we weren't really hopeless, but it was just in a place that like we would least expect it. 
Totally. And it just happened, you know? And one thing led to another. Within a month, I decided that I wanted to move from New Jersey to Los Angeles, even though Los Angeles was like, you know, the last place on earth I ever thought I would move to. But I just took the leap of faith and I, I you know, I just followed spirit and my own heart. And I know that this was the right thing to do. And, you know, we've been together now since September. In person since September. In person, like since me actually moving out here. And, you know, the first month we weren't really sure of what to do. The second month I went and got a job. I thought maybe I needed to start making money, uh, you know, somewhere else. But then as I, you know, took that job and Patty also took another job, we both realized that like, you know, we're ready to get this thing going. We're ready to start sharing what we've learned with the world and what we're continuing to learn because we're not perfect. We don't have anything figured out. We are just, you know, we both done our own work together and now it's starting to be a, a mutual thing where we're, it's a conscious relationship of we're supporting each other on our own awakening, our own growth, our own evolution as humans on this planet. Um, and it's time, you know, that's what grandmother showed us was we, we need to get this out to the world. I've learned through my path that, you know, my mission on this planet is to help raise human consciousness. And I'm still trying to figure out exactly the way to do that. But I think I know because we've talked about this is, you know, the balance between the masculine and the feminine of this shit is really out of balance right now in this culture. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of men who are very emasculated. Um, a lot of men nowadays don't really know what it means to be a man and to be that divine, loving, protective presence. And a lot of women are, in, are out of touch with their own femininity mm -hmm. because, you know, we're in a culture where it's just go, 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 go. And then over time, women go into their masculine and they're just staying there. And then that's a recipe for a burnout. Yeah. So right now, th this is like, you know, our avenue of what we want to do is to help people connect back to themselves, their own masculine and feminine. And whether you're a male or a female, we have the divine masculine and the divine feminine in each of us. It's not like I'm the masculine, you're the feminine. We have both of it in each of us and it's a dance between the two. Yeah, so many, so many delicious nuggets and I want to point out a few things for those of you listening and if you're watching um I, I made a little comment you know us women talk 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 right and I said that because we are so verbose right the feminine is so verbose. We could talk and talk and talk and talk. That part of our brain is more developed. There's more words that are available, but the masculine also has so much to say. And if we can be the invitation and just take a breath and allow them to speak, they have so much beauty and amazingness to share, right? Um, and the other thing that I wanted to point out is the power of the feminine to inspire the masculine to choose and to change, right? Uh, we met, we, we knew right away, so we jumped, right? And in that, I, as a feminine creature, invited AJ to choose more for himself to move from New Jersey to this new life, totally unknown, unpredictable, but that is the feminine, right? And so being it grounded in my own femininity, being the invitation for him to choose something greater for himself and for myself and that we could create for the world, like that's the gift of the feminine, right? And I'm so ready and interested and willing to, empower women to really dive into their feminine. And as I sit here and just listen to the brilliance that's coming out of his mouth, because I shut mine, <laughs> <laughs> then I get to hear all of the magnificence that's in his psyche and his awareness and his, in his, you know, being that maybe sometimes takes a little bit longer to come out. I know a lot of women um, 
you know, complain that their boyfriends don't communicate or they don't talk to them or they don't share enough. And just so you know, it's because you're talking too much. <laughs> I'm sure you have brilliant things to say too, but if you could take a deep breath and listen and wait, there is so much in there to be shared. So I wanted to point those, those things out in terms of the gifts that we are stepping into and that we are offering in working with men and women and allowing them to really step into your own divine feminine and masculine and his own divine feminine and masculine. And also for, you know, for men, I think a problem with a lot of relationships is, you know, the male figure trying to control the female. Yeah. And a lot, what I learned through the work that I've done on myself and just being with Patty is the, the divine feminine in its essence can be very threatening to males because it's so wild and it actually can't be tamed. And it's threatening because you're like, what, what is this? I don't know. I, I need to control this. I need to, I mean, you can look back at any culture since the beginning of time, what we've done to women. And it's because of that, um, the, the freaking magnificence of women. Um, so, you know, even if you're a guy listening to this, you know, like she was talking about, let the, let the guy speak. And if you're a guy, you know, just try not to control your woman, let her be wild and let her be free. Because if you allow her to do that, she's allowing her femininity to come out and therefore balancing out your own, yeah, your own. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really beautiful, it's a really beautiful point because the feminine is, wild and creative the feminine is the energy of life force which is big big look how big i am right limitless <laughs> limitless big and creative and joyful but it is that very energy that is a gift that is a gift when we try to control and squash that big feminine essence then you're losing the radiance of the feminine. Um, I remember that moment, one of those moments during, during ceremony where I felt, right? It was probably the first time where I really, really, really allowed myself to be as big as I can be. And I've been being that for many years, but it was way more. And I remember having that, that awareness of like, wow, this cannot be controlled. This should never be controlled. Like the more that I stepped into that feminine energy and the bigger I got, the more it sort of popped around, you know, the, the ceremony. And I remember having a moment because I was thinking, should I start working with men only instead of working with women? Like, is that what should be doing? And one of the lessons that I got was that in my work with the feminine, I am helping the masculine in my work of empowering women to be their most radiant feminine self, that is a contribution to the masculine because the masculine needs the feminine. Mm -hmm. The masculine needs that feminine energy. What as a man, like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, I'm all the things. I'm goofy, I'm funny, I'm smart. I can be really intense. I can be really present. I cry a lot. I mean, all the things, I have all the flavors. I remember the first month of us being together. I was like, well, it's been a month. You've seen it all. And just so you know, there's a lot more. Are you still in? Do you still want to do this? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I forgot what I was going to ask you because I got all, see, I'm still talking. Um, what, what has been the greatest gift, if you haven't shared it already, and what has been the greatest gift of being around a feminine creature who is so embodied and so present and so just all the things hmm good question <gasps> thanks i'll wait <laughs> um i guess to answer that question would be seeing you be the way you are you know patty is the most in tune person i've ever met with their body hands down she can feel everything um and she's also very comfortable within herself and she's very free and that's just opened me up a lot because I, 
a lot of my life, I, you know, I take things very seriously and I'm kind of rigid and rough around the edges and it's allowed me to come more into my feminine. Um, and I've been kind of enjoying that energy. It's kind of been like a vacation from like, you know, from a lot of things, but it's actually getting me back into my masculine, like truly in my power. And, you know, the masculine is all about going for the mission or going for that direction and whatever you need to do. So for me, just, you know, being around Patty, it's just opened me up to, to my own, to my own self. Beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> and I've, I've realized in allowing this masculine presence into my life, how much, you know, in, in my masculine, I was in building my business, right? Very directional, very like, got to get it done, got to go do it. And so allowing his masculine presence into my life, again, it allowed me to drop deeper into my own feminine. Huh. Anything else? I feel complete. I feel complete. Thank you all so much for listening and watching wherever you are in the world. Um, if you are interested in exploring your divine feminine and your divine masculine, if you're interested in creating an orgasmically conscious relationship in your life, whether you're single or in a relationship right now, we are here to lead, to guide, to support you in your journey. So I'd love to invite you to book a body love discovery session with us. And you can do that super easily at bodylovediscoverysession.com. Stay tuned. We have lots more to say and lots more to talk about, about all kinds of other topics, right? Yes. Yes. So we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.